Hi, this is Paul Slack. It's Good News Planet. I'm speaking with Virginia Matson. Hi, Virginia. How are you? Hi, Paul. I'm good. Thank you. Excellent. You're a Cat Enemy Award and Golden Globe nominee. And uh, you're going to speak today about congratulations on those two things and, and many more. You're one hardworking actor. <laughs> <laughs> And Thank I think, you very well. I love my job, so it's. I feel very uh, fortunate that I'm able to to uh, work as much as I do. You know, it's a tough time in our industry and in the you know in the economy in general. So um, it's been an unusually good couple of years for me. I'm very grateful. And they should be because you've uh, you've paid a lot of dues and you worked hard. You. Your mom was in the business too, right? And uh, so you're really. Yes, uh, my mom's a writer and a director. Uh huh. So you really you come from it, and you've you've and you've enjoyed it, right? Yes, well, I've enjoyed it very much, and I've you know I think it's there's a lot of ups and downs in this uh, in you know if you this is your chosen profession, but you know when you work, it's just that good. It's so good when you work that you're willing to go long periods on, of time unemployed <laughs> just to get your fix again, you know. It's a great job. It's a a real feeling of there's a real feeling of camaraderie on the set. It's mm-hmm. a kind of a family feeling and and I like being a part of a team. Mm-hmm. So the work atmosphere is also really appealing to me and just to be able to work with a group of people on a creative endeavor is is very exciting and and very rewarding and uh and to be able to keep working um you know past 40 is is really wonderful, and it's what I intended, you know, what I set out to do, um, and here I am still doing it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> this is good news. I'm I do happy. Kind of feel, I, do, I do kind of feel like a, a wise sage, even though I don't consider myself wise on, on any level, but it is really nice to be able to mentor um, younger actors, and I do that a lot. I speak at uh, acting seminars and classes and um, on the set, I you know I take the young ones under my wing, and you know I I uh, and and I I think because I sort of do that in my private life as well. You know, people often come to me for advice on all different kind of situations, and and that's why that's actually kind of how this finding the words dot com kind of came about because. As I'm facing menopause, I'm perimenopause, which means there's all kinds of, like, interesting, wonderful, happy things happening with my hormones. And so I was very outspoken about that to my girlfriends, to my family. And so there was a a lot of questions that uh, even friends of mine that are way older than me were asking me questions about what I was finding out online and from my doctor. And then I came upon these case studies and stories of women who post-menopause were experiencing really painful sex and not talking about it. And to me, this is so alarming. And if I found myself in that situation, I have to speak out about it because my sexual health is a vital part of my life. It's a vital part of my overall health. So I thought, well, I've got to find out all about this. And then finding out how women weren't talking to their partners or to their doctors and and just having this intimacy removed from their lives. It was so sad and so wrong. So that was, you know, the impetus for partnering with Shinobi and the website to help these women who might be suffering alone in silence to have some place where they can go to break their silence and to learn to find their own words, you know, so they can talk to a partner or talk talk to their doctor. And uh, so I was very encouraged and was really, really happy with the way that the website turned out. All good. That's great. Well, in there, uh, Shinogi's mission is uh, working to deliver a better life. So that's what we're really talking about here because if... uh, Yes, and better sex. (laughs) <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm all woman, for that. I'm all yeah, for that, wo- Paul. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm a party guy. <laughs> Let's enjoy life. We're very lucky to have it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> one of the keys to having a, a, a wonderful life is health. 
And without it, you oh, can yeah. do everything if you have your health. And if you don't have your health or if you're in pain and you're living, you know, in a way that is not comfortable, everything is bad news. It's not good news, right? It's not good news. And, you know, there is a side of us women that I'm sure you're familiar with where, you know, we'll tend to take care of everybody else but ourselves. Mm-hmm. and sort of run ourselves ragged doing all all this multitasking when we ourselves might be unhappy or unhealthy and, you know, just not dealing with it, just dealing with everybody else but ourselves. And but, that's a tendency we have that we need to learn how to to break that habit. So let's ask the, 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 the concern is that, in essence, that a woman during her intercourse at this time in her life potentially is not uh, um, as, uh, what causes the pain? Where where does the pain come from? And then why don't people talk about it? uh, I can't speak to, like, certain medical things because I'm not a doctor. Right, But it is a very real physical, there are changes that happen within the vagina due Mm -hmm. to um, post-menopause, due to menopause. These changes causes this, symptom to happen and it's a lot of times uh there women will be told well maybe you just need some you know some lube buy some over-the-counter lubrication or maybe you're not getting turned on enough maybe you're distracted in your life and it's like no this is a very real physical problem that can be treated so that you can have that intimacy back in your life Uh and you know, it's like there's a lot of women who are just like, oh, I didn't realize. I thought it was me, you know. Like there's, you know, that's a whole other subject about how we as women are viewing menopause. What does it mean? Does that mean I'm just, if I'm not fertile, does that mean I'm all just dried up and I'm like old now? What does that mean? You know, do I just not have sex anymore? So this is a this is a big conversation that women need to have with themselves their partners, their girlfriends. Let's talk about what this means to us and why we're shying away from changing it or or getting treatment. Because, Paul, we don't, you know, with men too, I mean, we don't age like Grandma and Grandpa did. We don't age like that anymore. We don't even age like our parents aged. So we have a whole different life that we're leading. And, you know, if we... If we live a long, healthy life, we're going to be spending many, 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 many years in in menopause, and that's the good news. That means you live that you're healthy. <laughs> you, know? Yeah, yeah. You're, you know, there was a time not that long ago where a lot of women died before they ever got to menopause, and it wasn't that long ago. That's my grandma's day. Mm-hmm. So. You know, now not only are we living through it, but we're living way, way, way beyond it. And, you know, in talking to some of, uh, you know, a a few of my friends that are, and my mother, who's, you know, in they're in their 80s, and they're all enjoying a wonderful sex life. And I, so it's not over because you might be in your early, you know, you might be around 50, give or take. You know, are you just, you think you're just going to stop enjoying the intimate part of your life because of that number? No, there's there's no reason why that ever needs to go away. I think you should become it is, president. You know, because as I was saying before, you know, our my sexuality is is a really important part of my life. To have mm-hmm. that intimate sharing with a partner is deeply important to me, and. It's 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 part of my spirituality. It's part of my expression. It's part of who I am as a woman. And the thought that that would be just taken away from me, I I I don't know what I would do without that. <laughs> I think, and you can imagine what that does to relationships. You know what that does to without that kind of communication and closeness. You know it it can destroy marriages. It can it can separate people. It can, you know, there's a a deal of depression that could possibly come along with that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so knowledge is power, you know, and and it's time 
for us to gain as much knowledge as we can as we're going into that period of our lives. And a woman should be speaking, I think, what you're saying to their, to their one, their friends, to their doctor, and their mate also, their partner, right? I mean, they should not be afraid. Yes, to just, I uh, mean, just, you uh, can imagine there's some important. women that aren't even talking to their partners, and that's why, you know, the website is a good place to start. You know, findingthewords.com, I mean, it, it really says it all. That's a place where you can start to privately you know, or with your partner, go to the website, take notes, open the discussion, and then take this to your doctor. Well, I would say, you know, you deliver once again a great, uh, uh, you know, sharing of yourself with a video that's on the website that I watched. And that video just alone, I will tell the audience, is maybe a tool to utilize with your mate, maybe with some friends, and oh, even yeah. with the doctor. It's a yeah. it's a perfect uh, opener to uh to for a discussion. So you did beautiful there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. All right. Last question then. Uh again, I'll put your website up also. I know you have one as well and cool. you're busy, busy oh, bee here. You. you got a lot of shows <laughs> coming up here on Lifetime and uh so on. Um uh, uh, what's good news for you? Um, you mean in my career or my personal life? Uh, any any aspect of your life that you'd like to share? Um, I, good news for me is my good health, and I and I and I mean that not just relating to what we're talking about, um, but that's always been a, 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 an important part of my life. There was a long period of time where I was after having my child. You know, there was five or six years that I was really unhealthy and deeply unhappy. And when I slowly took baby steps to gain my health back and to get strong physically, emotionally, and spiritually, I got really happy. And it didn't take overnight. It took uh, it took some years to do it. Um, but it always, you know, when I get back from a you know, a long job or I've traveled and I really feel like crap, excuse the language, and I really feel bad, I feel weak, you know, I'm not sleeping well, my hormones are going crazy, I'm just, you know, not a happy camper when I've neglected my body. And then my, it affects the way I think, you know, and, and how I approach people and how I go through my day. Um, so when I get myself back together, and I have to do it over and over again, you know, it's an ongoing thing, your health. And so when I'm happy and, str- and strong, it's because I've gotten my health back together. So it's, uh, it's, that's, that's always good news for me. 